So the worst today. Everybody know about today starts. First day of Advent. The first day of Advent. And you know we have our most awesome Advent assembly going on right now. Come on up, sister. Let her rip. You want to hear that prayer. I'm guilty of this as well. 
when you do pray every day, ask the Lord to guide you for the hope of what you're doing for our church. What can we have hope in and what is his hope expectation for you? And I'm guilty of it just as everybody else's. What is your hope for God's direction in our church in 2019? Amen. So anyway, with that said, DC's got the candle lit and we're good to go. Awesome. Thank you, Sister Jeff. So awesome. You know, the last couple weeks, you know, spent a lot of time between Sister Mary and between Beth. We spent a lot of time at the funeral home and talked a lot about different things at the funeral home. And <laughs> I was trying to make sure we had the obituary. And the first obituary we went in was not the one we actually, it was a, not the actual real obituary. They had to redo it. So the obituary went to paper twice to make sure that they got the right one at the end. But going back and forth, they told me about this lady. Anybody ever met somebody really, really tight before? I mean tight. I mean like my daddy tight. My uncle was so tight. Yeah, this is raising his hand. My, my uncle had a heart attack. And you know, the universal sign of a heart attack is grabbing your chest. My uncle grabbed his wallet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, a woman goes to, they told me this little story, so I'm going to relate it to y'all. A woman goes to the local newspaper office to see that the obituary for a recently deceased husband is published. The obituary editor informs her that there is a charge of 50 cents per word. She paused, she reflected, and then she said, okay, then let it read Fred Brown died. <laughs> Amused at the woman's fifth, the editor tells her that there's a seven-word minimum for all obituaries, so she thinks it over again, and in a few seconds says, well, in that case, let it read Fred Brown, Fred Brown died, golf clubs for sale. <laughs> Amen. I mean, what, what I found out is that when you're going through when you're going through things, sometimes it's just, it's just better to go ahead and, and talk about it and, and joke about some of the stuff. It's a, a whole lot easier. Amen. All right, God's so amazing. I, I, I had we're doing. I can't remember what we're doing now because uh, there was a Sunday that I didn't come because I didn't want to leave Bethany that long. And then the following Sunday, I, I she died. I came, but then the next Sunday I didn't because it was her funeral. We're gonna do it later, so I'm not even sure where we were at. On, on the series about uh, hell, but but still, in the middle of all that, Thursday night, I was trying to get back in there. And as I was trying to get back in there, you know, I told Linda, I said, we just got to go ahead, full steam, get back in there. I have regular counseling that I do on certain days, and I have certain people that I go see on certain days. And so, you know, I got there, I went to see Helen on Wednesday, and, and Thursday night was, was uh, Penn Detention Center, and I didn't go last time because I couldn't leave Bethany that long. And so, so again, I went back in, we were, we were doing things, and while I was sitting in the detention center, I was uh, actually normally it would go from cell to cell, but this night I had a heavy counseling load, and so I was sitting in one of the interrogation rooms, and I was waiting for them to bring the prisoners to me so I could do counseling. And while I was sitting there, I was thinking about this thing about how how it feels to 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 uh, to be going through this like for the last year with Bethany, and I see it's not just me; we all went through with Bethany. And not only we went through Bethany, we still had our own personal struggles that we had to go with. So there was all kinds of pointed uh, uh, attacks and pointed things that were hitting all of us. We were trying to get through all this. And, and as we were going through this, and I was thinking about this thing, I said, you know, sometimes it even felt like you kind of locked up, kind of locked out. Because things you normally do, the things that you get, I mean, have, have a thing that you normally do. you got it pretty well figured out on Mondays you do something, Tuesdays you do something. You know, even at your work, you've got certain things you know you're going to do at a certain time, and then something happens, and it takes you all out everywhere. It just takes you out of everything. You feel locked up, and you feel locked down. Well, for the last year, I will never, ever regret doing any one thing for that girl, not one thing, and I'll never regret the time that stayed there with her. I'm not talking about that. This is entirely different than that point. I'm talking about the other point is... Because so many things got put on the back burner, sometimes you did, or sometimes I did feel like the ministry itself, because it was all focused on Bethany, because she needed it right then, and, and I'm glad that I could focus on her. But what I'm saying is, you know, there was other things I felt kind of locked up and locked out. Have you ever felt that way? Because you're so busy, 
busy racing to the exact need that needs to be taken care of that you kind of have to put other things on the back burner. Anybody ever done that? Amen. And so I'm sitting there in this interrogation room, and I'm waiting for, for prisoners to be brought to me. And so I'm sitting here waiting, and while I'm waiting, the Lord begins to minister to me. Because here I am, it is ideal. I'm in the detention center. I'm in the jail. The other man in the jail, now I'm in a little interrogation room, so I'm in a little eight by eight. Uh, other than it doesn't have bars, it just has windows, a uh, one window, but the rest of it is just a big old encapsulated room that nobody can get in and get out. And the guards come and stand on the outside and they turn their back to us while we talk. And the guys come in with chains on their hands and chains on their feet. And so all, all this is going on. But I, I, I began to think about it again. Lord, it's time to get back into Sabbath. It's time to go ahead. And so the Lord began to minister to me. So turn to Jeremiah chapter 33. Stand for the reading of the word. Jeremiah chapter 33. Now I'm not going to talk about Jeremiah was a bullfrog either. Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah 33, I won't keep you too long. See, between won't keep you long is that two. T-O-O. -O. That T may have four O's by it, I'm not sure. <laughs> Jeremiah 33, this is what the Lord, he was speaking this to me Thursday night while I'm sitting in prison, sitting in the room, sitting there and seeing guys coming in out with shackles on their hands and their feet. As I was talking with them, and this, the Lord spoke this so clearly, and and I just, I honestly, with love my heart, I need to share it with everybody today because we all need to hear this. Amen. Jeremiah thirty three and three. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time. Y'all say second time. Why he was yet shut up in the court of prison. Now he's locked up. Shut up in the court of prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, or the one that made the earth, the Lord that formed the earth, the one that established it, the Lord, or Yahweh, the self-existent one, is his name. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace, your mercy. I thank you for your word. I know, God, you're alive and well. I know you're on the throne. And I know, God, you're working in our midst. And I know, God, that, 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 that you have been with us this whole time. I thank you, Lord, that Sister Mary is with you. I thank you, Lord, Father, that, that, that uh, 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 all of our brothers and sisters that have gone on in this year, that they're with you right now. And I thank you for that. I thank you, Sister Kathleen. She's with you, Lord. I thank you that Bethany is with you. And I know, God, that you got your hands on this, Lord, amazingly got your hands on this, and I trust you this day for us. Help us to see and know and understand that we don't know your ways, but we listen. When we cannot see your hand, we can trust your heart. <coughs> when we cannot see your hand, we can trust your heart, and we trust you right now. In the name of Jesus, your friend, the church said, Amen. 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 Wait now, get somebody a high five, low five, no five, and tell them God's good. Amen. Now, now, now what to, just I want, to, I want to take the amplified version of this scripture here, and I want to show it to you now. Here's Jeremiah, okay? The, listen, here it goes. Here's the amplified version of this scripture here. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time while he was still shut up in the court of the guard, saying, Thus saith the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, fenced in and hidden, which you do not know, do not distinguish, do not recognize, you have no knowledge of, nor do you understand. If you will call unto me the things that you do not know, the things you don't understand, the reason why you're locked up now, the reason why things aren't going the way you expect, if you will call unto me, I will show you what's going on, and I will help you make it. Through this. You see, see, Jeremiah, uh, he was called the weeping prophet, amen? And the reason that he was called the weeping prophet was this guy did not have a good track record. This guy here, he, he's working for God and he doesn't see any fruit and he decides he's not going to work for God and then God gets to him and then he does work. He says, 
I was going to just quit the whole thing, but there's a fire shut up in my bones. But let, let's just see here about Jeremiah. His mission seemed impossible because he was talking to people who could care less. Have you ever talked to somebody about God and they could care less? Have you ever felt like God put you in the mission field and you say, Lord, did you mean to put me here? Because obviously they don't know what I know, that you're, how powerful you are. They will be listening to what I got to say. They would show you grace. You know, uh, 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 right now, I, I'm amazed because now the store, for a while, the stores we quit putting out major scenes and quit putting out Jesus at Christmas time and had Santa Claus and all the other things, no bell, reindeer, all the stuff going on, but you didn't hear anything about Bethlehem. But people have finally stood up and started talking about it enough that now they do. I was in Walmart last night, and I honestly didn't even, I, I tell you, they had some little things, uh, 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 stuff showing Jesus and showing him going in the manger, things, sticks to put in your yard and things. Honestly, I didn't even need it, but I said, you know what, if we don't buy it, no son came and brought it up and nobody's buying it. So when they hadn't bought it anyway, gave me a couple of bucks. But, but, but again, people have stood up and they begin to talk, and now, guess what? Jesus comes back on the scene. But the mission was impossible because the people had turned their heart from God. Not only was mission impossible, but the message was ignored. This man preached for 20 years before he ever got his first convert. Can you imagine preaching for 20 years and nobody listening to you? Can you imagine preaching for 20 years and nobody getting saved? Can you imagine preaching 20 years and all you hear is, can you take this somewhere else? I mean, we think sometimes we have a heart, we preach a sermon, and nobody comes to the altar. We get all upset. Can you imagine having an altar call for 20 years and nobody coming to the altar? So here's this guy. He, he, he's, he, 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 the mission seems impossible. His message uh, seemed ignored. And is now, on top of all this, he's locked up. He's trying to work for God. He's trying to do what God said. He's trying to please him. Even at the cost of his own uh, 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 mentality, he's trying to do what God told him to do. And in the middle of it all, now he's locked up. Wow, let me ask you a question. I, mean, I, I, I guarantee I'm going to see a hand or two in here. Have you ever felt that way? You're trying to do what God said. The people that you're around are ignoring it. You're trying to, 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 to bring the message of good news. You're not seeing any fruit. And then in the middle of all of it, you get locked up, you get locked down, and, and now you can't even move. Wow! Can you imagine what Jeremiah was feeling? So, the first verse. The word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah. Watch this. I love this. God didn't bring you this far to leave you, Philippians 1 and 6. He has begun a good work, and you will continue until the day that, that he comes again. But God, the thing that he started in you, he's going to finish. Don't you think he's not? You know, I sat back and thought about Bethany, 27 years old, and, and, and wow. I used to sit back and think, you know, of all my kids, I think, well, what can they be doing to help you, God? And what's their calling? And what's their ministry? And, of course, it's pretty obvious with D.C. and Daniel, you know, at least part of their ministry is music. And so I looked at that, and I was looking at Bethany, and I said, well, Bethany, I know part of her calling is just to love people, because Lord knows she loves people. Absolutely, just adored people. She loved to be around people. But I just kept saying, well, Lord, what more specific is her calling? And what can she do for you? And in the last year, I've seen her do more for God than I've seen some people do in a lifetime. So she went out of here at 27 years old, but she had the miles on a, of, of a 90-year-old because of the stuff she did for God in that last year and the way she ministered to people. And everywhere she went in the cancer center, her eyes lit up and people ran and and I remember one of the people at the very front desk when I was getting ready to take her to hospice. Uh, I was going out and I was taking her to hospice. And as I was getting out to go to hospice, the guy said, well, where are you going? I said, and he checked us in. He always checked us in. I didn't have to say a word. He would see us coming. He would check us in. And he had checked Bethany in when she came. And so he says, where y'all going? I said, uh, and I said, we're going to hospice. And the guy looked at me and turned his back on me. And I, I knew something was coming, and I saw his glasses come off. And I saw his hand go in his face, or his face go in his, in his hand. And I saw his shoulders start jerking. And I said, this guy here sees this every day. He sees people come and go every day in his cancer center. He knows people will come in, and they're not always coming out. So I said, it must be, I said, look at the impact that one girl had. 
for that hymn coming in. All right, he only saw her for five minutes at a time. That's it. Five minutes at a time, he would talk to her. And he would even go to her room to see her. But here it is now. She, I told her she's going to hospice, and the guy cannot get control of himself, and he had to walk off. And I said, man, oh, man, what kind of impact? I wish I could have that same impact on people that Bethany had this last year. Wow, wouldn't it be so awesome? So, so you see, here it is. The word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time when he was shut up in the court of the prisons. Let me just show you. Let me just break this down a little bit. So the word comes to him while he is here. Watch this. First, he's, he's shut up. It's bad enough that he's shut up. It's bad enough that he can't move. But watch this. He's in the court of the prison. So in other words, Jeremiah's not only locked up, but he's locked up where everybody can see him. He can't hide. He can't hide his pain. He can't hide his hurt. He can't hide anything because he's right there where everybody can see him. So he's locked up in the prison. You know, I, I, th I think about that thing. You know, you know uh, there's been times where I felt shut down. And there's times I felt shut down in public. Have you ever felt that way? You're thinking, oh, I bet everybody's thinking about me. I bet everybody's talking about me. Have you ever said that? There's this one guy, he couldn't go anywhere because he thought everywhere he went, somebody was talking about him. He couldn't even go to a football game because every time the team got in a huddle on the field, he thought they were talking about him. Y'all get a minute. So Jeremiah, not only is he locked up, He's locked up in plain view for everybody to see him. You know, you know I pray for God to, to heal Bethany. He did. He gave her the ultimate healing. Good Lord, he gave her the ultimate healing. But I pray for God to heal her so, so many times. And, and I seen God pick her up, and I didn't think she could go any further. And God just kept pushing it and giving her and giving her. But what I do understand is this. You know what? Sometimes circumstances may hinder you, drag you down, shut you down, and shut you out. But I'm here to tell you something. God doesn't always remove the circumstance. I have people, you know, I heard all kinds of stuff during this sickness. And I heard all kinds of things at the end of this. I heard all kinds of things during whatever, you know, during this year. But one thing I do know this is God doesn't always change your circumstances, but God will take your circumstances to change you. And I'd rather God change me through my circumstances than him to change my circumstances every time. Because if he changes my circumstances every time, I will never grow, I will never learn, I will never get tough, I will never be able to do what I'm called to do because he does everything for me and he becomes a cosmic sugar daddy and I become a spoiled child. But the way he does it, he lets you learn the lesson. As a matter of fact, I've been talking about this. So he'll, 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 he will give you the test first, and then he'll teach you the lesson. Wow, chew on that. So, remember, you may can hinder us, but you can never hinder God's words. So watch this. That leads to the second. Watch this. I love this. And because I preach the good news, I am suffering, have been chained like a criminal, but the word of God cannot be changed. So I'm willing to endure anything if it will bring salvation and eternal glory in Christ Jesus to those whom God has chosen. Wow. You see, I love this. Here he is. He can't move. Here he is. He's locked up in prison. Here he is thinking God had forgot about him. Here he is thinking, God, I I'm working as hard as I can work and nothing's happening. The harder I try to work, the worse it gets. And now not only are they not listening to me, now I'm locked up where they can come by and ridicule me and talk about me. I can't even get a break here, God. I can see Jeremiah. That's why he's the weeping prophet. Because weeping was not more than just his eyes. Weeping was an attitude. This guy here was tore up because every time he turned around, he was trying to get a break. And he couldn't seem to catch what we call the break. So, so watch this. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. I love this. It came when he first got called. He said, I called you for your mother before you were in your mother's womb, before you were born, when you were in your mother's womb. I ordained you a prophet. I put my words in your mouth. I've called you to make a difference in this world. So he knows that God's talked to him. God showed him. But in prison, sometimes we forget that God's still talking. 
When things are bad, when we're shut down or shut up, we forget that God is still talking to us. God is still doing what he does best. And so I love this. Although Jeremiah couldn't move, God could get to him. Amen? The second time. I love this. But matter of fact, I just wrote this down here. It ain't over until God says it's over. Amen? Come on, y'all. It ain't over until God says it's over. You may be at the end of the day thinking you're shut up, you're shut down, you're shut out. You want to do so much for God and you feel like every time you try to go forward, you get keep, keep getting knocked back. And God says, it ain't over. He can talk to you in your worst prison. He can talk to you when things are at their very bottom. Trust God in all of this. So, so here you go. I love this way I told him. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Jeremiah 1 and 5. So here we go. Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. I love this. Because look, that word Lord is Jehovah, the self-existent one, the one that needs absolutely nothing to prop up on. Nothing to help him. God's got this. I, 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 I want to design a little shirt that says Bethany Linton, God's special messenger, and put her, her birthday and her death day on the back, but God's got this. That's going to be awesome. Matter of fact, that, that team bed, those two things are going to be some awesome shirts that we can see around here some way, somehow. But that's coming, amen? But look, again, all I keep hearing is Bethany saying, God's got this, God's got this. And uh, she me right down the road and she goes, God's got this, Dad. She goes, you look a little worried, Dad. Oh, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> she goes, yeah, you look a little worried, Dad. She says, have you forgot God's got this? I go, yeah, God's got this. And she says, remember, Dad, either way I win. That just blows me away because if I had what she had, I'd have me a sleeping bag out there by Paul Funeral Home sleeping on the sidewalk. And she just goes, he's got it, Dad. He's got this. Chill. Take a chill pill, Dad. He's got this. And it was so funny the last time the doctor said, I don't like the way you look, Beth. You need to go into the hospital. And she said, good. I get to watch the movies. Whatever that thing is in the hospital, like the sort of like red box or whatever, free. And he, he said, excuse me? She says, yeah, y'all work on me and I'll work on the movies. And I'm sitting here thinking, girl, he just told you you're that close to death. And you told me, oh, I'll get a chance to watch movies. <laughs> okay, then you can watch movies and, and we'll work on you, girl. Amen. And he said 24 hours might be in six days. You know, so again, I, I want that. Jeremiah needed that. Yahweh, the self-existent one, the maker of the earth, amen. He spoke it, he made something out of nothing. Not only did he make it, he formed it, he gave it purpose. He spoke something out of nothing. He, was, he formed it, he made, gave it purpose, and then he gave it power. Because the Bible says then that after that, after he spoke it, and I, I didn't put the words in there, praise God. I was in such a hurry last night, I was feeling anointed. Didn't even, I was so anointed, I didn't even write in there what form means. It means it too. Established means it thud. Did y'all see that? I got so happy writing this stuff down, I didn't even write down. <laughs> Praise the Lamb of God. So, so, so here it is. So here it goes. Remember, sometimes God changes the circumstance. And sometimes God lets the circumstance change us. After my mother died, it totally changed my ministry. How I handled things, how I saw things, how things even looked. Then after my wife died, it did another 180 and changed me in so many different ways the way I see it. And now with Bethany, I have to admit, each one got a little harder, but Bethany's been the hardest one of all. And I, I'm just telling you that it's been the hardest loss of all. But, but at the same time, all I can think about is, is I don't need to let any opportunity go slide by. Because... God's got something for us to do. And we got to do it. Amen. So here's what he said. Here's what he told him. He said, well, he's in here locked up. I love this. I'm getting ready to close. He said, get ready. Now, I didn't say come up here yet because you got to give me a minute. <laughs> this is God's message. Call to me and I will answer you. And I'll tell you marvelous and wonderful things that you could never figure out. On your own. Wow. Do you know Bethany in her first five minutes in heaven? Those more than we'll ever know on this earth. 
And Patrick and I were talking. That just blew me away, Patrick. It blew, it just blew me absolutely away. She knew more in the first five minutes than we'll know the rest of our life. And she's no longer, look, she, she says, God's got this either way or we, and she's going, I won. I won. I won. Can you imagine what it's like to be there with the, after cancer with my mother with full legs and full ability, uh, uh, my wife without the heart problems? Can you imagine what it's like for all of them up there? They're looking down saying, I, I, bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Let them just do what they got to do to get here. Amen. So watch this. Here it is. Call to me, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Get ready. Here we go. There's the invitation. Call unto him. I may not can get to him, but I can call him. I may not even feel like it, but I can call on him. Those last few days, I remember putting, getting to Bethany's ear and just whispering to Bethany. And I said, Beth, I want you to say this. And she'd say it. And, and, and I'd, say, I'd say things like, God, I need your help. And she'd say, God, I need your help. And I'd say things like, God, I'm ready to go. And she'd say, God, I'm ready to go. And, God keep things going. God keep things. It's just, just amazing. I, she all the then 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 it comes to the point she couldn't talk, but she could see her eyes. Wow. God let me have that kind of faith. Amen. So she was still talking, although she couldn't talk. Then the promise, I'm going to answer you. Not only going to answer you, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to answer you, and I'm going to show you something. Because remember telling you this, I told it at the funeral. Bethany said, Dad, I want to go home and I want to go outside. And so we prayed about it. Bethany, I prayed about it. I want to go home and I want to go outside. Then I asked the ladies, the nurses and the doctors, said, can we take Bethany home? And they said, no, it's impossible. So she needs 24-7 care from here on out. They can't do it. The hospice is not set up for what she needs. You need to take her to the hospital. So on Thursday, when they gave her the last radiation treatment to her back, just so she could lay on her back, they were going to take her to the hospital's house. Beth and I had prayed, let, let her go home and let her go outside. We had prayed this, me and her. And here's how God answered and showed. They come and said, we're getting ready to take her to radiation. Can you go on to the hospital's house and register her, please? I said, okay. So I go to the hospital's house. And as I'm registering her, I said, uh, or I said, okay, I'm getting ready to leave. I've got to get back to my talk. I said, hold on, I'm going to show you her room. I said, okay, uh, where's her room at? They said 107. Well, we live on 107. So her hospice room was 107. I bought her a coat to wear out of the hospital. And she was not going to go out of the hospital the regular way. So as the guys came in to get her, I said, Bethany, I'm putting this coat on you. And they strapped her on with the coat on. And I saw her acknowledge with her eyes, and I said, we're getting ready to go to 107. Didn't say where, just 107, and I saw her acknowledge. And then we get to the hospice house, and the next day, they opened the French doors. We took her out. As we took her out, whenever we go outside just to relax at 107 where we live, there's a guy in the backyard that has a leaf blower. This guy blows leaves, he blows sand, he blows whatever, he cleans his dog with it, whatever. He's just always blowing that leaf blower. Winter, spring, summer, fall, he blows that leaf blower. As Bethany goes out, the sun starts getting her eyes, so I see her start blinking her eyes a little bit. And I said, it's going to be all right, girl, you finally got outside. And then at the Hope Lodge, some guy turned on the leaf blower. And I thought, first said, I can't believe this. We're trying to calm things down, and here's a leaf point, and it hit me. That's what always happens when we're home. So I said, Bethany, how about that? <laughs> Our neighbors used to using that leaf blower. So God answered her prayer, not the way we expected it, but she got a chance to notice she went to 107. She went outside, and she was in familiar surroundings. Isn't God good? So watch this. He said, I will show you great and mighty things. That's power. I mean power. And then there's the potential. Things that you do not know. Did see, now you can start coming up here. We need to quit 
talking or letting our problems talk to us. And we need to start talking to our problems. As I was reading this chapter, and this is all the familiar parts, I began to go down a little further. And it just blew me away. Jeremiah 33, 20 through 22. And this is the message version. God's message to Jeremiah. After he told me, call upon me, I know you're locked up. I know it's bad. I know things are rough on you. I know you feel like nothing's happening. You feel unproductive. You feel unfruitful. You just want to quit. You're just tired of all this. You're, you're, you're not seeing anything happen. Like you're expecting this is not what you planned. But I said you will be a prophet. You know, you're not like Isaiah with all this plan or with all this stuff happening, talking about the Messiah. Or you're not like Elijah with all this flamboyance and Elisha. No, you're just looking like you're in a rut all the time. Your ministry is a rut. So I can tell you, you call me and I'll talk to you. Watch this. God's message to Jeremiah. God says, if my covenant by the day and my covenant by the night ever fell apart, so that day and night became haphazard, and you never knew which was coming and when it was coming, and then, and only then, would my covenant with my servant David fall apart. That's powerful. And his descendants no longer rule. The same goes for the Levitical priest who served me. Just as you can't number the stars in the sky nor measure the sand on the seashore, neither will you be able to account for the descendants of David, my servant, and the Levites who served me. You may be here today feel like you're locked up, locked down. You feel like, you know, you're in that spiritual rut. You're trying to move forward and it seems like something's pulling you back or, or you're hindered by circumstances and you're not going anywhere and you're wondering, why is God letting this happen to me? And God's saying, just talk to me. Just talk to me. Tell me how you feel. God will talk to you in all this if you'll listen. But then let me ask you another question. You say, well, how do that promise is going to be true for me? This scripture right here. The next time the devil tells you God doesn't want you, God can't use you, your life is nothing but a rut, and you might as well just get down and believe that nothing's ever going to happen for you. You remember the covenant that God said, as long as you can tell night and day, I will never break my covenant. When you got it this morning, didn't the sun go up? Didn't it rise? Last night, before you went to bed sometime, didn't the sun go down at the appointed time? Tonight, the sun will go down at its appointed time. The moon will come up. You'll know it's night. You'll know it's day in the morning. And as long as you can look out and know that it does it every single day, God will keep his promise. Why? Our God is an awesome God. He doesn't move the way we expect him to at times, but our God's an awesome God. I, I pray, we all pray, we all pray for Bethany's healing. She got it. Not the way we were expecting, but she got it. But the most awesome thing of all is, you got to remember, there's not one of us, unless the rapture takes place first, there's not one of us in here that's not going to die. I looked at every Old Testament prophet, and there's one thing, although their message was different, and although their circumstances were different, every Old Testament prophet had one thing in common. They all died. I looked at all New Testament prophets. Different messages, different times, different places, but they had one thing in common. They all died. Look out across here. There's people that were only here within the last year that aren't here because why? Because there's a point at once for man to die. God has a time and everybody's going to die. The important thing is what you do before you die and are you ready when you die for what's coming? Bethany hurt for one year. And toward the end, it was so miserable. But if you could take that one year and put it on the tip, I 
my banker. And know that it has a beginning and an end and it stops. When she stepped over, she stepped over into eternity where there is no beginning and end. And it never stops. So for the job she did with that little bitty dot, look at how great the reward is forever. Never stops. No matter what we do, no matter what we go through on this earth, it's a little dot compared to eternity. So God, whatever I need to do in this little dot, let me do it. Let me do it strong. Let me do it proud. Let me do it. Let me stand up and be faithful to you. Because I know on the other side of that dot, for eternity, I'm going to be rewarded for what I did in that little bitty dot. It's amazing to me that our two oldest members die within weeks of each other. And then one of our youngest adult members died. 96, 94, and 27. So everybody's dog was a little bit different. But once they got in eternity, the time is the same. There is no other. And their rewards are timeless. They're ageless. Make sure, God, let me make sure that I handle that dog well. Because you gave me a big promise. And I can't wait to get to that big promise. Wow. It's awesome. Does everybody stand? Every head bowed. Every eye closed. No looking around. There's times that I get so aggravated that there's times where I feel like, why am I being shut down or why am I being shut up? Lord, and why, am I, why is it happening in such a way that it's even, it's more like it's aggravating, it's, it can, at times can even be humiliating. I, I don't understand. With every head bowed, every eye closed, y'all, anybody ever feel like that, put your hand up. You don't understand why you're being shut down. You don't understand why it's happening the way it's happening. And, and, and it's just, it doesn't always seem to get better. It seems to get worse. If you can get your eye focused, not on the dot, but on eternity, it will help you handle the dot. If you can get your eye focused on what's coming ahead instead of what's behind, you know, we see people moving around and thinking, man, look, I'm in my cage. I'm locked down. And the person beside me, they got it going on. They're loving it. You got to remember something. When we start looking at people, what we do is we look at people too. This is how we do it. I look at, when I look at you, I see a snapshot. Remember this. Same way with you. When you look at me, you see a snapshot. When I look at myself, I see my whole history. And so, as I'm looking at myself and I see my whole history, I look at you and see a snapshot. I try to compare your snapshot to my history and it doesn't it doesn't correspond because your snapshot looks like you're having fun and that you're doing good and there's nothing bothering you. But my history is showing all this pain. you got to understand, that same person that's looking at you sees your snapshot and he's looking at through all their history. They're thinking of all their pain and all their discomfort. So, so don't let that be a, be a hindrance to you. God, help us handle that dot. With integrity. Handle that dot with power, with purpose. Because on the other side of that dot, there is no time. And it's amazing. I'm asking all that will to make your way up to this altar to spend some time with the Lord. I know it's getting kind of late. It's almost 12 o'clock. But all that will come and spend some time with this altar. Talk to the Lord. Ask him to help you to get your mind off the dot, that small point in time, and get your mind on eternity where there is no time.
every hurt, every problem, everything in that thought that has hurt me will be gone when I get to eternity. It's minor compared to eternity. And I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, that I can handle the dot, knowing that you've got all under control. It's in your hands, God. I give the dot to you, Lord, and you're going to give eternity to me. Why? Wow. God, what an exchange. I give you my dot, and you give me eternity. Wow. Wow. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes, there's times I feel shut up. Yes, there's times I feel shut down. Yes, there are times I suffer in private. Then there's other times where I suffer in public. No matter what, it's all in the dock. I give it to him and he gives me eternity for exchange. Wow. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, everlasting one. You're awesome, God. You're awesome. You're awesome. The sun come up this morning. The sun's going to go down tonight. God's keeping his promise. We are going to make it. We are definitely going to make it because he gave us his word. As long as you see the sun go up and down, night and day, I will keep my promise. You will make it. You're going to go through this. I'm going to help you. Right now, give him your dot. And know that eternity is coming. Wow. Eternity is coming. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because after the dark comes eternity. I give you my dogs. What exchange? Thank you, Lord.
have scholarships and we didn't, my family couldn't send us. It was just us doing it. And it was hard. It was engineering school and I, and I was, it was killing me. And dad said, son, I know it's hard now, but if you can hold on, give it your best. It will change your life. And from here on out, life will be different for you if you can hold on in that little bitty spot. Of course, I was 18 years old and I knew more than he did. And the Lord spoke to me last night and said, remember what your dad said? He said, I'm telling you, tell the people the same thing. This is all God. Eternity. Is so awesome. Let's all stand. Brother Frank, we dismiss us in prayer, please. Father God, we thank you for the word that's gone forth this day, Lord God. A word of encouragement, Lord God. Lord, just look at our lives, Lord, and know that you've got everything under control. There's not one thing going on in our lives that you're not aware of, Lord. Now, Father, strengthen us. Let us go forth and do what you've called us to do. Father, as always, we'll give you the praise, the glory, and honor for it all. In Christ Jesus' name we pray.